Right, it's the holidays. Yes, they're f***ing upon us again. It's sparkling drink time. So we're going to do uh, two drinks. We're going to do the Mexican 55, great quote with this one, and the airmail. So in Paris, at the La Perla Bar and Restaurant in 1988, a really great drink was created called the Mexican 55. Now, the Mexican 55 is obviously a tequila drink and sparkling wine. Now, sparkling wines and champagnes, well, champagne is expensive, I know. But if you don't want to be spending too much money, I would find something called Cremant de Bourgogne. And this is just one I use. Okay. A Cremant. Now, it may not be made in the Champagne region, but it's pretty close to the Champagne region and they do the same exact process and it's a great value for money. It's a fraction of the price you're spending on Champagne. Now, or you can do the whole Jesus trick, which is basically start out with the expensive stuff and then towards the end of the evening when everybody's pissed and rat assed you go on to your cheaper sparkling and nobody will notice. I'm telling you, Jesus did it 2,000 years ago, you can do it as well. All right. Now, the Mexican 55, there's a great quote that goes with it, and it's by uh, Fidel Castro. He said that uh, bullets come like wine, uh, vintage wines. They come in great years. Uh, Mexico 55 was a great year. Mexico 52, not so great. Take that as it is. That's Fidel Castro for you. But here we go. We're going to make the Mexican 55. So all those people who like their margaritas, but also like a little, you know, a bit of fun, here it is. So what we gotta do is ounce and a half of tequila. Then we do one ounce lime juice. Now I do a rich syrup, so but it, which I will do just half an ounce. But if you're gonna have a one-to-one -one syrup, just do three quarters. Okay. Uh, the original recipe calls for uh, Angostura bitters, two dashes. I like to prefer two dashes of orange bitters, okay? I think it works a lot better, all right? Then, get yourself a nice highball or fizz glass. Shake it. Don't look, not for too long, don't need to. That's mice. Strain. Get your cremant or your sparkling, whichever one you want to use. You can use cava, you can use prosecco, you can use uh, and this. Is finally opening for me. Thank you. All right, opening a bottle of champagne. Really simple. I'll open this box, sparkling. Over the top. Unscrew. Hold the top. Twist at the bottom. Okay. Just slowly twist, and it should have just a very small little. That's it. All you need to do. And then just top it up. Just a little. There you go. Get a champagne stopper. These are very, very useful. Okay, these will help your whiskey stay, I mean your sparkling wine last for almost five days, maybe even seven, if you keep it in the fridge, obviously. But there you go, and that is it. It's a great little drink. You can put a dehydrated uh, lemon or lime or whatever you want on top. I prefer it just like this, really easy. You can even put it in mugs if you want. It doesn't particularly matter, all right? But it's a great drink, Mexican 55. Mm. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, that's lovely. All right, next up, the air mail. Mm. Mm. Okay, so, just done the first one. The 
the uh, Mexican 55. Now we're going to do the airmail. For all those who are born post 1990, pretty much, before the internet and cell phones and all that kind of stuff, there used to be these very special, funky little sort of blue envelopes that you used to have. And uh, I was rather fortunate that I was able to travel a lot even when I was younger. And the airmail, uh, which first came out in 1918, I'm not that old. But in 1918, um, airmail was introduced in these little sort of blue uh, envelopes and you wrote on them and they were all, you know, uh, designed for posting around the world. And we used to write home to our families with these airmail letters. Now, uh, of course, a drink was created sort of in honor or named after this uh, pre-internet days. And uh, it supposedly comes from a, uh, a Bacardi rum pamphlet from 1930. However, it's really mostly accredited to uh, Esquire's Handbook for Hosts, first published in 1949. And it's a great drink, and it's one of my little personal favorites because it's really f***ing easy to make. Um, all you need is one ounce of rum, or one ounce or ounce and a half of rum, but I'm gonna do a nice Cuban. You can do almost any rum you want with it, it's up to you, but one ounce. And then, Half an ounce of lime, half an ounce of honey syrup. Okay. Then add slice. All you need to do is a little shake because you just want to crack the ice. Okay, so. That's it, all right? Get a nice, in this case, I've got a nice little vintage highball. Just strain it and dump it all in there. Dirty pour or dirty dump, as some of my staff like to call it. Okay, then we top up with sparkling. Again, using the cremor. There we go. Do a nice little stir. All right. Do a dehydrated lime for a little bit of a garnish. Okay. And you can put a straw, you can put whatever you want. Okay, but there it is. It's the airmail. It's a lovely drink. Mmm. Great drink. Put it in a teacup or coffee mug at breakfast. Great hangover cure. Don't quote me on it, I'll get in trouble for that. Mm. Ah, there we go. Thank you. Now f off, enjoy your holidays. <laughs>